Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm ZS Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at the Chase Center. Uh, uh, we're a little bit before Warriors game. I'm here with Deepin Desai, the Chief Security Officer here at Zscanner. Uh, Deepin, we're going to be watching a game soon, but I thought it'd be a good time for us to catch up. How's that sound? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And so you are the CSO at Zscanner. Well, what's that job entail? Yeah, so as part of my job, I'm, I'm Chief Security Officer responsible for our internal security infrastructure, software, services that we provide to our customers. It's our job to make sure they're secured and safe. And then I, as part of my role, being a sister and a security vendor, I also have the new cyber innovations, which lives under me. That's the research and development R, where we're continuously adding technology, including AI-driven stuff, to stay ahead of the threat landscape. Yeah, now I know, so we're at the beginning of the year 2025, uh, one reason I talk to, like talking to you is you're, you are, I think, well regarded as a thought leader in security. And they recently came up with some predictions, right? Yeah. So can you summarize those for me? Absolutely. So uh, I'm going to start with the number one, which is top of list for almost everyone, AI-driven threat landscape. So that's where you are going to see more and more social engineering, phishing, wishing attacks, or they're using personas executive personas to go after the employees, the weakling. Super awesome. Yeah, so this would be, it takes phishing to another level, right? Absolutely, yeah. and we have already seen a couple of examples this year. I saw one that was leveraging our own CEO's voice to yeah. target our own internal employees. So we're gonna see many more of those this year in 2025. The second prediction is around AI ecosystem that almost all enterprises are developing in their environment. This is where we're going to see more and more adversarial attacks against those AI models with the intent to poison the outcomes of those applications that these enterprises are building. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect is accidental leaks that will happen because we're going to see more and more, and you're going to hear this term a lot this year, shadow AI, where uh, yeah. There will be unsanctioned AI models or unsanctioned third-party app that the teams are trying out, which will result in accidental data leak. Yeah, well, that, and so that last one's an interesting one because we've always had shadow something, shadow global, shadow cloud. How do companies protect against shadow AI? So it will require processes, it will require technology, it will require governance, uh, the full spectrum. You will need technology to perform TLS inspection, to apply your data loss prevention inspection in line as well as out of band to make sure everything that you care about stays secure. It's not being accidentally leaked out. Even the applications that are being built out in your environment, you're applying same level of security that you would to your crown jewel applications because you're dealing with a lot of data depending on the type of applications that you're investing in. Yeah, yeah this is an area I'd like companies see companies get out ahead of ahead of it because they certainly did in the cloud, they didn't with mobile devices, things like that. And so it'd be good if they did it. Yeah. All right, Deepan, well, you mentioned uh, the AI power, uh, social engineering. How do companies then protect themselves against that? Because the ones I've seen have been very good. How do you know that it's really not a message from your CEO or uh, you know, from your CFO? So, great question, Yes, We are already in an era where you need to apply zero trust principles across the board. You cannot trust a message, an email, uh, a voice call, even if it's pretending to be from someone that you know without explicitly verifying it. So this will require technology investment going full-blown zero trust where you're doing additional vetting. Like, okay, someone is logging in using an identity that you trust, but are they coming in from the right device? Do they have authorization to access what they're trying to access? When someone picks up a phone call, is that coming in from a number that you trust? Or is it coming from a random number? And then the context, what are they trying to tell you to do? It should also raise flag. So this is where you will need to also invest in employee security awareness training. As these attacks happen, you need to equip your employees to tackle them. Yeah, and um, you know, since you mentioned employees, I know uh, we always think of threats coming in from the outside. Um, what about insider threats? How do you how do you see them playing? Insider threat is a growing vector. Um, we're we're 
seeing a lot of remote IT worker cases. Uh, we have uh, ourselves investigated a few being a security vendor. This is where the threat actors will leverage either direct employment opportunities or they will target a contractor that you rely on to hire remote workers. Or, and this is something we have seen in last six to nine months as well, where a company announces intent to acquire another company, suddenly that another company will experience a spike in attacks where they're trying to get inside their environment, steal an identity. Now that also is a sort of an insider threat for the parent company because they're using a trusted channel to get in. And I know you recently went to the uh, World Economic Forum Cybersecurity Summit in Geneva. Well, did you have any takeaways from that? Uh, yeah, that was very enlightening. So this was in November. Uh, there were about 200 These very large... These for you, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really large uh, organization CISOs. There were regulators. There were... Uh, ministers and if I were to summarize three key takeaways from from my perspective from a CISO perspective number one everyone is in vehement agreement that AI investment in AI security is number one priority for all global CXOs if you don't do that you are going to inadvertently open up yourself to a lot of attacks number two this is where everyone including the regulators were of the belief that harmonization of controls is very very important with these emerging technologies like ai global countries regulatory bodies are trying to come up with new regulations but if every country has a set of controls that does not align with another country's set of control, organizations will find themselves struggling to do things that will meaningfully reduce the risk and focus on those checkbox controls to comply with those global... So the point that came out of the WAF discussion was we need harmonization of security controls across these various regulatory control requirements that is being called out, including for AI. And then number three, and this is something that I was on the edge on including in my predictions as well is we as CXOs need to start getting ready for what the cyber threat landscape would look like in quantum computing yes. world. So are you a believer that people are going to steal data today to decrypt tomorrow? We're already seeing that. So encrypted TLS sessions are being stolen and collected with the intent that they can decrypt those when they have capability to do that if you're not using quantum safe cryptos. All right. So last question, I'll let you get to the beginning. Um, given we are at the start of 2025 and uh, we have more AI, more ransomware, we have crypto coming, CISO to CISO, or the CSO to CSO, for your peers out there, uh, a, few, a couple of pieces of advice. What should they be focused on today? Yes, so number one thing I'll call out, yes, everyone's talking about AI-driven threat landscape. It is important, you need to have a focus in that area. But the traditional threats like ransomware, social engineering attacks, we are going to see a lot of that. Ransomware attacks, especially what we're seeing is encryption-less ransomware attacks, will continue to see growth in that aspect because they're able to get a lot of ransom being collected by successfully targeting and staying under the radar yeah. in many of these attacks. I know that's scary too. So, so make sure you don't lose focus on those traditional attacks which are still rising every day how do you go about doing that invest in a zero trust technology very very important look we need to use ai to fight ai but there is no ideal solution there is no ideal ai solution that would solve all your problem which is where use the zero trust vector to shut down the paths that the attackers including ai driven attacks can take to target your organization. So prioritize zero trust. Yes, invest in AI to fight AI, but use this holistic strategy to go about securing uh, yourself. So AI to fight AI, but don't forget about zero trust. On uh, behalf of people inside as CSO of Zscanner, I'm Zscanner Valve from ZK Research, saying thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time in my next episode of Zcast. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you.